Dudes, what's happening? This is Trent, still in Hawaii, and uh, last night, or a couple of nights ago, I jammed out some colors on these uh, Wolverine-style explorations. I switched it up to Photoshop, got a little Photoshoppy with it. Um, there's probably going to be some like cars going by in the background and stuff. I'm at a Starbucks out here in Kona, uh, still on the Big Island, uh, enjoying. It's not. It's a vacation, but it's it's also. I've been trying to stay productive and do some writing and do some painting while I'm here. Do some YouTube and, um, but uh, anyway, so today I jumped in to doing some colors on this. And uh, the way that I start out, the, the way that I found that's the fastest way to colorize line art, colorize grayscale images in Photoshop is to do uh, gradient map over selections and, uh, and painting in masks. And I've done some very in depth tutorials on this on other uh, videos in my channel and in my box set of tutorials. In fact, I decided that with these, uh, these style explorations, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and put them in real time in, the, uh, in the, the box set as well. So that'll be in box set volume two. Uh, it's gonna be in the deuce. And uh, so I'm making sure that when I'm doing these uh, selections for the, uh, for the gradient maps, that I'm, I'm making sure that the, the colors are feeling like that's a good skin tone. I had to create a custom skin tone for this one. You can make, you can change that skin tone or you can change that gradient however you'd like even after you've set it as a layer effect. You'll notice if, if you look at the layer stack on the bottom right, you can see the, 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 the there's an alpha channel, uh, kind of a, it's a, an alpha channel attached to the layer effect. So that's going to indicate how much of that effect is shown and, uh, and then what I do is I create a layer on top of all of that where I can paint in some highlights and some bounced lights and just add a little bit more color dynamics to it, you know. But it's a great way to just jump right in and get some colors in place. And you can create uh, the, the range so that depending on how dark something is, it's going to pick up more of this color. Depending on how light it is, it'll pick up more of what's on this side of that gradient. And uh, it's just overall a really speedy way to, uh, to get some colors down on something and not have it feel flat or too uh, sterile. You know, I covered, uh, recently I covered a different coloring technique where uh, it's mostly just using multiply layers to, uh, to darken in some areas. And that's another way that you can do it as well. You don't have to do it any of these different ways that I'm showing you. I'm just showing you a variety of different methods that I tend to use depending on the situation and the art style. Again, if you watch the first video of, of the Wolverine style explorations, you know, I talked a little bit about how I'm, I'm playing around with techniques that I don't normally try, or I'm playing around with finding what style works really well for, you know, this type of uh, a character, this type of uh, uh, a look that I'm going for. And I'm, I'm just exploring what I can do. You know, sometimes it's nice to, uh, if, you got, if you got yourself a, uh, a Bugatti, sometimes you just want to see how fast you can get it to go, <laughs> just see what it can do, you know. Um, and, and so I'm kind of putting to test some techniques that I've explored over the past year. If, you, if, you've, been follow, if you've been following my channel over the past year, you've noticed that I've been trying a lot of new things that I don't normally do. And uh, that's kind of, I, I'm a little bit very strict with it uh, in a lot of the pieces that I've had to do because of schedules or because of uh, deadlines. But with something like this, I'm very free and relaxed to just try whatever the hell I want, you know. And that gives me a lot of freedom, but I don't know what I can do all the time. It's kind of neat to try a new technique and you, you, you train with that technique and then really see what you can do with it when you're free to explore in your own manner with no limitations, no restrictions. Nobody's directing me on these. Nobody's telling me it has to be like this and try to paint like that guy or try to make it look like this art style. There's no restrictions like that. That's very freeing and it's it's an awesome thing to do when you're you know out and about <laughs> uh, somebody asked actually that, that brings up a good question uh, somebody asked in the last video uh, what kind of tools do I use when I'm traveling or when I'm not in a home workspace well generally most of what you see me do on my YouTube channel is done on a MacBook Pro or a Cintiq companion but I would say 90% of what I do is on a MacBook Pro with a Wacom and Tuos and I covered a little bit of that in one of my uh, office tour videos uh, where I kind of showed a little bit of what tools I use. Um, and, uh, but specifically when I'm traveling, I found the most comfort in using um, a MacBook Pro with a, a Wacom Intuos Pro. It's a medium-sized Wacom Intuos Pro. 
And uh, I can put a link to that in the, uh, the text field below the image as well, or below the video as well. Uh, but in terms of brushes, I've done uh, several tutorials about how to create custom brushes, but I'm not using anything fancy in Photoshop really. Um, I'm just using uh, mostly airbrush. A hard round and a, a square with the a square brush with the opacity set to pressure. Uh, most of what I'm doing is actually rendering in grayscale and then just using the gradient map to fill in the colors and then I just touch up things with uh, with brushes afterwards uh, on a on a layer on top of everything. And you'll notice my layer stack gets pretty sloppy. I'm not a super uniform guy when it comes to that sort of a thing. Uh, I tend to just put in what I need when I need it. Um, but doing the face studies that I recently did in the Trends Toolbox series has really helped me improve my uh, facial structures, uh, my understanding of facial anatomy, and also uh, you know, getting interesting expressions on, on characters. Uh, another effect that you see me do here is uh, I'll lay down, a lot of times I'll, I'll lay down an airbrush uh, over a selection, and then I just kind of cycle through some different layer modes to try to get a different effect to see how much it's going to bring up color get color variety, uh, color variation in there, and then, um, and then I decide whether I want to flatten it later. Um, but for the most part, I'm playing with a pretty neutral light. It's like a camera light in this whole setup. And uh, not really, I'm not doing anything dynamic with this particular shot. You'll notice with the, the image to the left, that's a, a lot more of a hard shadow kind of a, an image. That one I got a lot more intense with the lighting with. Uh, but it's interesting how that one I spent more time in the sketching stage. And uh, you'll see by the end how quickly that one gets colored in that sort of Shinkawa style. It's literally, it's uh, 30 seconds to color and about uh, you know 20 minutes to sketch, 30 seconds to color. Whereas these uh, more stylized things, nobody, you know, it, it's, I think it's unreasonable when th people say that uh, style, stylized stuff is easier or that it's faster. It's, it's really, it's not. <laughs> Doing something that has a lot of style and flavor and uh, has a consistency to it is way harder than, use, than doing realism, especially in game development. And one of the things that most people might not realize about uh, why most of the more popular games right now are more realistic is because they're cheaper to make. Um, you can use photo textures. You don't need as much concept art. You don't need as much uh, uh, exploration or to spend a as much money. Oh, that was a loud truck. Uh, you don't need to spend as much money on R&D uh, because you can literally just keep increasing the polygons and keep using photos for your textures. Whereas if you do a fantasy setting, such as something that uh, Level 5, for instance, does with their RPGs like uh, Dragon Quest or any of those, you have to design a lot of things. You have to design uh, castles and dungeons and you have to design a lot of creatures. Um, and uh, that takes time. It takes energy. It takes exploration. Most of what, another thing that a lot of people might not realize about uh, why they're getting a lot more realism in video games is that the, uh, the, the time that goes into uh, iterating on, uh, on more stylized stuff, you, when, you do, when you're making assets for a game, um, most of the time, I'd say like 70% of everything that's explored in the conceptual stage gets thrown out. The more AAA ga the game is, such as games that are made by Riot or Blizzard, they throw out about 70% of what they make, um, sometimes more, actually. And then it's only when they've sort of pinpointed the thing that's working really well, because uh, game development is so much about feel. It's less of a science, it's about feel. And so they're looking for a certain feel that's working really well, especially when you're innovating and when you're trying to do something new that, that hasn't really been done before. Um, you, so you end up throwing out a lot of stuff. And the more stylized stuff that you do, the more expensive it gets. That's why there aren't many of those companies, because not many companies can afford to do that level of iteration. Uh, if I were making, if I wanted to ensure that my game looked good, I'd go with the uh, photorealism, and I wouldn't need to hire as expensive of artists because they're not, I'm not trying to reach for one specific style. I'm searching for realism because realism, one, it sells pretty well, and two, it's, um, it's more, uh, uh, easy to get everybody on the same page. You don't need concept art or spend a lot of time in R&D. Um, and uh, you don't need to ex like try a bunch of stuff and be all touchy-feely about like, well, maybe a little bit more blue in here, you know? No, if the, if the real 
life photo of that setting looks good, just make that. Conversely, the, the downside and the trade-off of realism in games is that you're limited by the technology. So as new systems come out, like nobody's really playing Rainbow Six 2 anymore. Uh, I guess maybe some people are really hardcore about that. But uh, the more realistic it is, the less lifespan it has, unless if it's for PC, where you keep increasing the specs, and then you, of course, make uh, you know HD revisions of it or something like that. Um, but whatever the case, um, you know, in this style exploration, this last one, I think this was the closest, I think I said, to the, the Twilight Monk art style. I feel like his eye is a little bit crooked, and I start to play around a little bit more with those features uh, as I get closer to the final version. And then uh, I realized, like, his skin is a little bit too purple, so I added a, uh, a layer on top of all of that, and I set that as, like, a color layer. And then what that's going to do is it's going to uh, kind of back off that purple a little bit so that it gets a little bit more of a flesh tone in there. And uh, then I just kind of wanted to make it so that the top part of his hair felt almost like a flat plate. So this could almost be like a very animated looking uh, version of Wolverine. And I, I like that one a lot. Uh, getting to the last one, you'll see, I basically laid down a uh, gradient map. I adjusted the eye because the eye was a little bit crooked. And it's a good time to, to fix it before you go in and add color. And then uh, I, layer, I laid down a uh, gradient map for, over the whole thing. And then I laid down a, uh, another yeah. layer that's like a lightened layer with just a red on it. And then you've got your uh, halftone uh, effect and bam, Yoji, you got it. So clearly it's also easy that everyone can do it. <laughs> so uh, if you are interested in watching the real time version of this, so you can dissect it, slow it down and see the layer effects and all of that fun stuff in Photoshop, uh, I do have the video in my box set of tutorials, volume two. Uh, if you are interested in seeing more of my videos, please subscribe. I love having you here. As always, mia casa su casa. And so until next time, remember dudes, draw with passion, and uh, I'll catch y'all manana bond. Ciao.